بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Secrecy and doing things secretly has been emphasized. It's an amana, it's a trust, whether it's with regards to yourself, with regards to whether you've been entrusted with certain information. Likewise, in everyday life, for the preservation of our deen primarily and our dunya, secrecy is very important. Asiru Lugatan in Arabic, the word secrets or classified information is not revealing important confidential information. So something that's clandestine. It's opposite to making something known. And the word in Arabic is al ifsha where a person exposes and he reveals information that not supposed to be revealed. So if we can call it to go into stealth mode, and that's why we've been encouraged in Quran as well, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la takhoonu allaha war rasool O oh, people of Iman, this is the quality of the believers. Do not be unfaithful to Allah and His Rasul. Do not betray the trust. And do not betray your trust. Do not be unfaithful. So you've been given this trust. There should not be any form of deception, disloyalty, but more preserving it. So these ayat, Allah ibn Kathir has mentioned that the one incident was with regards to Hazrat Abu Lubaba radiallahu an, with regards to the judgment of Sa'd bin Mu'adh and because of his property, his wife, his children were with them and they asked him, what do you think we should do? Should we accept the judgment of Sa'ad bin Mu'adh? So he made a gesture to his throat, signaling to be slaughtered. So they realized that information was breached. So even though he made an ishara, it was a hand movement. But he realized himself he had betrayed Allah in his Rasul. And these verses were revealed where he then tied himself to the columns of Masjid al Nabawi and he took an oath I will not taste food or drink until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not relent me or I die. In another narration, it is with regards to Hatib bin Abi Balta when the Quraysh were given information and this information was breached and Sahaba was sent to retrieve the letter which Hatib sent. Then he was summoned and he admitted to his faults. So as Umar stood up and said, Oh Nabi of Allah, should I cut his head off? For he has betrayed. So Nabi والسلام, interceded on his behalf Da'hu fa'innahu qad shahida badran. Leave him alone, he's a badri. Wa ma yudrika la'alla Allah ittala ala ahli badrin. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overlooked his fault due to being from amongst the people of badr. So that's betrayal of information. Other Mufassirin have explained, betrayal includes minor and major sins. Allah has given you this trust, and when we betray this trust, it is called khiyana. Likewise, Ibn Abbas radiallahu's commentary, وَتَخُونُوا amanatikum. This amana refers to the actions 
which Allah Jalla Jalalu has entrusted to his servants and the awamir and do not breach la takhunu these obligations which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made compulsory likewise in the hadith al majalisu bil amana meetings are confidential so a group of people sit and discuss something that gathering is confidential it is top secret nobody should be privy of that information that's why Allama Munawi has mentioned لا ينبغي إلا ذلك فلا لا يحل لأحدهم أن يفشى سر غيره. So it is not permissible to expose anybody's secret. So in this era of technology, we need to be very careful and cautious because there are a lot of people out there who want to breach this confidentiality and are looking for your sensitive information. And they want to access it without permission. So breaches will happen through cyber attack, whether it's criminals who gain unauthorized access to your computer systems, to your networks. They will steal anything private, sensitive, confidential, financial data, database. So uh, these cyber attacks, whether it's through ransomware, malware, phishing, or DOS. So nowadays, cloud computing where we put everything on the cloud including our guna and sins and masya through social media that's a breach so people have become used to the norm it's just the norm to utilize certain things to do certain things but we don't realize that that norm is abnormal and you view breach yourself so these cyber criminals want to infiltrate and extract this information. So they know how to access your computer. They bypass networks securely and this is all remotely. So the different forms, let's take ransomware where it's software and, and, and they gain access to vital information, vital data. And these files and systems are locked and there's a ransom demand for it. So big companies, enterprises, businesses, and amongst the biggest known breach ransomware is the WannaCry virus, where a piece of malware was released. It infected 250,000 systems in 150 countries in the first hour. 110,000 IP addresses were compromised within 48 hours and in just one hour 7,000 computers so this is the most notorious destructive ransomware of all time and it even breached big car giants like Renault, Honda then you get malware where it is malicious software it's a program which probes systems and it is there to, to breach your computer, breach your software and a person eventually systems are compromised and hackers steal, they hijack computer functions. So it can penetrate your computer, it can penetrate websites, uh, infected files, emails. So this is across then phishing where they gain access to your sensitive and confidential information whether they send fraudulent emails don't click onto it seems like a reputable company and uh, that's also very dangerous then dos denial of service where the cyber attack penetrates and takes control of a machine and it disrupts the host service so the different forms of targeting, but we see Microsoft in 2020, the customer records were breached 280 million clients. Then Zoom teleconferencing accounts were breached and were on sale on the dark web, 500,000 credentials. Likewise, Ancestry.com, 60,000 customers breached. 
TikTok, Instagram, YouTube user profiles breach 235 million accounts. So different breaches have taken place and recently through COVID when people are working at home, the industry breaches have increased 58% and uh, Verizon has confirmed 43% of account breaches. Likewise, scams have increased by 400% just in one month, which makes COVID-19 the largest ever security threat. Read between the lines. And what's it costing? So an estimated, uh, there are 11 attacks every second. So every 11 seconds, there is ransomware attack and it's costing around by 2025 10.5 trillion dollars worldwide so from vulnerabilities biometric hacking or touch id facial recognition passcodes so the fact that you are using this is compromised your information is out there as well so go back to the asal, the original, and how, how big has this gone? The largest insider attack happened at Boeing, where $2 billion worth of aerospace documents were stolen. And this information was given to China. Likewise, social media data breaches account for 56% of breach. So you are on social media, you think so, you are socializing, you actually demolition and you breach in your own self so amongst the largest data breaches in history three billion accounts of yahoo were compromised first american financial corp breached 885 million records bank transactions social social security numbers even Facebook, 540 million user accounts were breached and exposed. You go to hotels as well, your data is there, rewards programs, Marriott International breach, 500 million guests. We want to look at the, the largest government data breach in human history was the US voter database, 191 million voters information was exposed and go back to 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 secret top secret confidential information then snowden the most wanted man on earth so he started working in the federal agency and he worked initially for the cia and this breach according to the NSA audit, was 1.7 million documents. Up to them tapping the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. So a cell phone was also tapped into. So all this information was released. Snowden released all this information initially his job was to recruit spies and then he climbed up the ladder then he was into monitoring the NSA facilities around the world and he did not like what he was seeing so this, the, the CIA had targeted killings mass surveillance and CIA drones were dispatched only to bring people's bodies into body bags so people don't really understand and estimate the, the gravity of the the scope of nsa surveillance capabilities so they can map your movement to your uh, ip addresses to your unique id calls from your cell phone from your computer from your electronic device and he was surprised because of all the agency works, all private communication, all metadata, and Snowden found this. And he was very surprised that all this metadata was being 
leaked to Israeli intelligence and these were private communication so the NSA had leaked emails phone calls of millions of Arab Palestinian Americans and had relatives in the Israeli occupied Palestine and uh, in his words this was amongst the biggest abuses of all so your your information is confidential another part of the breach which which motivates Snowden to release the information was the NSA director Keith Alexander they were actually spying on bad habits of politicians for example if they were watching pornography then they were trying to snoop and figure out personal vulnerabilities we could use that against government officials so from 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 top secret malware that was put to put in systems around the world of stealing foreign secrets to intercepting information without any warrants any probable cause so uh, and, and and there's a lot of we need to do research there's a lot of information out there of, of how great what magnitude this breach ha has and this deception has, has, has reached so if we look at uh, Syria there was a major internet service provider where the systems went down but the NSA hackers in 2012 want to do exploit these core routers and uh, they wanted to have access to all the traffic in the country but obviously they planned and the router was bricked it, it was uh, totally uh, inoperable so this failure of uh, the entire connection on the internet in Syria this was a, a breach of the US government and the, the, the information was going to go public but at that time there the Syria company didn't investigate where the breach happened and they just wanted to fix it but that's to that level the scope is, is, is gone unlimited so uh, they, they want to know everything about you where you travel what you do whether you are sick whether you are healthy where do you go what do you like what does you like what you dislike where do you shop what do you shop so it has different levels of of, of breach and this di di digital communication has made it very easy for for surveillance and and profiling you the question might come that we, how does this connect these are all instruments of Dajjal and uh, his database for his appearance they need to profile you know your vulnerabilities so you say you're not important no every person on earth is important because they need you to be part of the Jamaat of Dajjal they want you to follow him and how do they channel, channel you how do, what's your weaknesses how they can exploit you what's your strength where, where are you a focused person do you have objectives in life do they need to take you out how can they take you down so OPSEC which is operation security we, we need to be more vigilant and we need to be more cognizant of this here so if we look at what has been done and, and to what level the, the different forms of, of tracking is being done in the world we have to be very cautious of this information and uh, we need to be very well informed so besides this big plot and planning of shaitan and the jali systems even simple things which in our everyday life something ha happens at a place a bank is robbed they they sketch an image you your appearance is closer to that you can get uh, arrested so an identity sketch likewise somebody faked your email address they faked your ID document police are at your door to arrest you how do you prove you're the wrong man so uh, a person found the wife his wife's body 
strangled and stabbed 29 times while she was just going for a walk outdoor. It's the real life story. So, uh, and after investigation, they found out that how did this person get in? He had met the man hiking. He was looking for a lift. He got into the car, got information. And uh, when uh, he got the information about the person, where he lives, what does he do, etc., etc. And he came into the pretext that I am here to visit your husband. He's not in. He was about to leave. Can I get a glass of water? Got in and did what he needed to do. Likewise, another situation of a person was arrested and all the evidence proved that he is not guilty, but he spent six weeks in jail. So different situations can make us vulnerable. We should not, we should make sure we don't get caught up and become vulnerable. So sometimes you are innocent, but you have other things which will implicate you. So people are worried, what's on your smartphone? All the emails you ever sent in your life and received, is anything there? It can be dangerous, it can implicate you. Uh, your bank, your broker, your credit company, the contents of your hard drive, your so-called deleted files, all the searches you've ever made on Google, YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. So these are important things which, which we need to be careful, cautious, uh, take lesson and uh, Secrets are part of Deen. The Amal for today is Rakatan bi Siwak Avdalu min Sabin Rakatan bi Ghairi Siwak Tur Rakats with the Miswak is more beneficial, more virtuous, more rewarding than 70 Rakats without the Miswak. That's the rewrite of Jabir radiallahu an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making Amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.